easiest, fastest way to be able to find the x and the y intercepts of a quadratic equation just like this. Now, obviously we could work on easier problems or we can work on more difficult problems, but the main idea I wanna to convey to you in this video is what I'm about to show you, you can use for any different type of quadratic. But it's very important to understand that a quadratic function is even, meaning it's always gonna cross the y axis. However, that does not necessarily mean it's always gonna cross the x axis. When we look at the parabola, the graph of the quadratic, it can sometimes cross it once, twice or zero times. How can we identify these X and Y intercepts quickly? Well, the main thing I want you to understand is the Y intercept is when the graph crosses the Y axis, meaning along the X axis, X is gonna equal to zero. So the easiest thing to be able to do is find the Y intercept. The Y intercept is when X is equal to zero. So in this equation, all I simply need to do is plug zero in for X, right? I plug zero in for this X, zero in for this X. Well, guess what guys? Zero times anything is gonna be zero. So basically I'm gonna have a zero, and plus a zero plus a 12. So my Y intercept in this case is gonna be a Y equals 12, which we can also write as a coordinate point of zero comma 12. And to further complicate things, not always is the graph gonna cross at a rational number. Sometimes it's also gonna crash at irrational numbers. So the easiest ways to be able to find the X intercepts is again to create a quadratic equation. The X intercepts is going to be when Y is equal to zero. So when I replace zero in for Y, I now have a quadratic equation that is going to be equal to zero. So now I need to go ahead and take a look at and say, all right, what are my techniques I can go and use to be able to solve an equation like this. And there's basically three of them that you can use. Factoring, quadratic formula, and completing the square. Now, the cool thing about the quadratic formula and completing the square, you can actually apply them for any quadratic. However, it's not always going to be the easiest method. Sometimes both of these methods can get a little messy, but you're always going to be able to arrive at the answer. My advice, if you're trying to do this quickly and easily, is to always look for factoring first. I know a lot of students do not know to look for factoring. They look at a problem like this and they say, ah, A is not equal to one. This is not gonna be very fun. Why don't I just revert to using quadratic formula or revert to using completing the square. But if I can convince you to keep on practicing with factoring, I think you're gonna see that that is by far the fastest, easiest way to solve a quadratic equal to zero to therefore find your X intercept. Okay, so let's go into how would we factor something like this. The first thing you always wanna do is be able to see what can I factor out? Like what do they have in common, right? And they have a common factor of two. So if I factor out a common factor of two, I'm now left with a two X squared, a plus a seven X, plus six. Now the cool thing about the factoring out a common factor, like when I divide by two on both sides, right? That's not going to be changing my X and the Y intercepts, right? That's actually just getting rid of that value. So now, cause again, that's just going to divide out. So therefore I'm left with a zero equals a two X squared plus a seven X plus six. Now the main thing I want you to understand when you are factoring a quadratic, all quadratics can be broken down into a product of two binomials. Once you get good at factoring, you can kind of quickly start to look ahead and say, Hey, is this factorable or not? Obviously, if it's not factorable, then you'd wanna go ahead and use the quadratic formula or completing the square. But to go ahead and test that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is say, all right, what two numbers are gonna multiply give me a two X squared? Well, I can use a two X and a X, right? Then I wanna say, well, what two numbers are gonna to multiply to give me a six? Now here we have some options, right? We have a six times a one and we have a three times a two. The problem is which of these works and which binomial are we going to put them in? And the way to determine that is we wanna look at this middle term, which is seven X. And to obtain the seven X here, I'm basically going to be combining the product of my inner terms as well as my outer terms. So I got to think like a two X times one of these factors plus an X times one of these factors needs to add to a seven X, right? So is there anything that's kind of working? Like for instance, like you wouldn't want to do this. You wouldn't want to put a six here and a one here, right? Because two X times six is a 12 X plus one X is a 13 X. That's already bigger than seven, right? So I'm trying to get to really close to seven X. So what stands out to me is if I do a two X times a two, right? That's going to give me a four, right? Two X times two is going to be a four X. And then if I put the three over here, right? That would give me a 4x plus 3, which is going to give me a 7x. And guess what? That is my factored form, right? You could switch them around and realize that it would give you a 8x, which is close, but not the right answer. So now that we have our factored form, the great thing about solving a quadratic by factoring is now you can use what we call the zero product property. And basically what that states is whenever you have a product equal to zero, you can set each of those factors equal to zero to go ahead and solve. The now existing equation you can solve using inverse operations. So I can subtract the three, divide by two, and x is going to equal a negative three halves. Over here, I can just subtract the two, and x equals a negative negative two. So in this example, for this quadratic, we actually have two X intercepts. We have a negative three halves comma zero, and we also have a negative two comma zero. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you want more examples on quadratics, or you want to go and take a look at the notes and resources I provide my students inside of my own courses, go and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below, or you can also check out my next video that I have for you here. Cheers.